Okay, uh, in the very last video, we were trying to tackle this problem here. We said we have 200 identical chairs that could be distributed into four rooms uh, so that each room may have 20, 40, 60, 80, or 100 chairs. If we do it like that, how many ways can this be done? And after we set up the generating functions and multiply them together and did some manipulations, we determined that the answer to our problem is, in this expression here, determining the coefficient of x to the 120 power. And this, 1 minus x to the 100 divided by 1 minus x to the 20th to the 4th power, we can write it like this. And then we expand these out using the binomial expansion theorem. And we did quite a bit of work with that in the previous videos, both when you have a positive exponent or a negative exponent. And for this, we have this expression with these general binomial coefficients. And for this term, we have this expression with these binomial coefficients. And how we got from here to here, we covered that in some of the other previous videos. Which, by the way, if you did just find this on um, YouTube, if you go to the website at digital-university.org, all the videos that we have uh, concerning combinations or permutations and the work that we did with the binomial expansions and the generating functions, they're all there for you uh, in their proper order. So here, we realize we want to multiply x's from here and x's from here so that when we, mod so that we add up the exponents from these two, we end up with x to the 120. All the other terms that would be resulting from that multiplication, we have no interest in. So here, the first two terms in the series are this. The next term, when i equals 2, gives us x to the 200 power. Well, that's past x to the 120, so we don't even bother to write out those other terms. We know we're not going to use them. So we have two terms that we have picked up from this one. Now, these are going to be multiplied by all the terms in this infinite series here. But we're not interested in all the terms. We're only interested in when we have an x here to a certain power. So I multiply it over here by one of these. I get up, I end up with x to the 120. Well, let's see. Here we have x to the 100. So if this was x to the 20th, multiply them together, we would have x to the 120. So that means in this expression, i would have to be equal to 1. So we would have c, i is 1. That would be 4, just times x. Now, incidentally, all the terms here in this series, 1 minus x to a negative power, they're all positive terms. So all these terms here are positive. OK, so let's see what we have. We had, this should be the 20th. We said, here we have x to the 100. If i is 1, that's x to the 20th. So you multiply these together, we get x to the 120th. This is just 1. So this would have to be multiplied by x to the 120th because that's what we're looking for, coefficients of x to the 120. Well, then i would have to be equal to 6. So we have plus x to the 120, and its binomial coefficient, try to keep these in focus now, i is 6, we said, because 6 times 20 is 120, so that's 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. OK, so these right here are the two x's from this expression, so that when we multiply it by x's from this one, we get x to the 120. This times this is x to the 120. This 
times this is x to the 120. So here the coefficients are this times this, which is just 1. So we have, we'll write it like this now, our binomial coefficient, this minus this. Now this is just, when that's 4 over 1, that's just 4, that binomial coefficient. So let's just write it like 4. So then, this times this is x to 120, that's minus 16. So figure this out, and we've got our answer. So let's see what it gives us. Here, 9 factorial is 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial. And then from here, we have 6 factorial times 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. So these cancel. That's 3. That's 4. So we have 3 times 4 is 12 times 7. That should be 84. So this binomial coefficient here is 84. 84 minus 16 I think that's 68. Yes. Okay. So 68 is the coefficient of x to the 120. So that then is a solution to our problem. So here then, going back up to the top part here, 200 identical chairs distributed into four rooms. Each room may have 20, 40, 60, 80, or 100. How many different ways can that be done? And the answer is 68. Okay, hope that wasn't too long and too tedious. Um, again, there's no shortcuts uh, that when we're working with these generating functions, except that we had to remember we're interested usually in the coefficient of x to a certain power, and when we're multiplying things together, we can remember we're not interested in all the terms that result from the multiplication, just simply that for x raised to a certain power. In this case, it was for x to the 120th. And once we thought of it in those terms, then it became a much simpler procedure. We just use these to determine what axis we have to multiply here. So we did the multiplication. We could get x to the 120 and then figure out its coefficient. OK, uh, that's it for this video. Hope it was useful for you. And again, Hopefully, um, you have an appreciation as to how powerful these generating functions are. They can help us solve many types of problems that, without using a generating function approach, they would appear to be that um, absolutely hopeless, just too complicated to try to get a to get a handle on them. Okay. Anyway, that's it for this video. Come back and join us for some more videos, and we'll try and solve some more problems.